everyone. Welcome or welcome back to Novel Idea. My name is Dia and today I am going to go over my favorite adult fiction books and we're going to draw for Jane Eyre. So today's tea is a birthday cake tea. This is Celebrate <laughs> and it's from Republic of Tea and it is lemongrass and green ruibus and apple. All right, so we are just going to jump right in. Let's get started. Um, I'm going to draw at the end, so stick with me. So the first one is the Scarlet Pimpernel. The Scarlet Pimpernel is during the French Revolution, sort of Zorro kind of figure who tries to get people out of France so that they can uh, survive the revolution. The best thing about it is the writing and just how funny these characters are and it will endear itself to you. I, I just want so many more people to read it. Baroness Orksy is the author. A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, and this is by Betty Smith. And this is basically a story of a childhood and family relationships, and it's really poignant. It's about overcoming poverty and privation. It's, it's just a lovely, lovely story. And so I read this when I was just newly married and it really made an impression on me. We have Jane Eyre. You can't even read it there. Let's open it up. This is my favorite edition. I have several editions of Jane Eyre. And this is my favorite one. So this is by Charlotte Bronte, and this is wood engravings by Fritz Eichenberg. When Jane is at school, when St. John finds her on the doorstep, Jane Eyre is a story that takes place from about the time that Jane is seven or eight until she is a grown woman and it is just about the injustices that are part of her life that she continually overcomes and overcomes so graciously and I love this story. I know there are a lot of people that have a problem with the um, relationship that comes later in the story, but I just think that it's of its time, of its day, and I just, I just love it. Jane Austen's Persuasion, and this is my favorite Austen. So, Persuasion was actually not one that I loved the first time that I read it. The older I got, the more I loved it. And the more I appreciate the realness of this story. So this is about Anne. Her father has lost most of his money and her mother has passed away. Her oldest sister is very much like her father. Her youngest sister is a attention hog. <laughs> and Jane's character of Anne is just very self-deprecating, um, very much somebody that stands in the background. She gave up the opportunity to get married when she was young. This is about second chances and it's just a lovely, lovely story. It's also one of her shortest stories. 
kind of about this last week or last time I put up a favorites video. This is Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens. This is my favorite Dickens. And the reason for that is just because of the fantastic um, moral code of the main character in this story. Uh, he is not the only one with a fantastic moral code. And typical Dickens, the, the bad guys are just completely bad and the good guys are completely good and you just fall in love with a few of them in this in this book and not necessarily the main character. I love Nicholas, but I don't think he's my favorite character in the book. Sometimes the good turn that you do just even unknowingly the good that you do to people also often comes back to lend itself to you as well. Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is my favorite Gaskell. This is actually unfinished. She never got to complete it before she passed away. This is the story of Molly and her father who is a doctor. They are quite close and they love each other immensely. The mother has passed away. Her father decides to get remarried and the person that he decides to marry is not everything that she appears to be at first. And she has a daughter who is Molly's age. Molly is one of those people that she'll do something that is maybe deprecating to herself because she loves you so much and she wants the best for you, even if it doesn't feel like the best for her. Two Anne Brontes <clears throat> with Agnes Gray, which I just reread and fell in love with it. <laughs> um, I read this with Tiffany's Patreon group I fell in love with this little woman who dug down her roots and said, I am not moving off of these principles. I am not moving away from uh, what I know to be good. And it's okay if you don't like me for that. There's a love story to it, but the love story is very innocent and the reason that she loves who she loves is because of his character and because she comes to know something of him that is just so integrous and that's why she loves him and so it made me love this even more just with that aspect of it. And then this is The Tenet of Wildfell Hall, also Anne Bronte. And both of these solidified Anne as my favorite Bronte, even though Jane Eyre is probably my favorite Bronte novel. Um, I have read Agnes's, I'm sorry, I have read Anne's poetry as well and I love it and so between her poetry and Agnes and Tennant it's it's just she is absolutely the best Bronte in my opinion <laughs> um okay so uh, Tennant is about a woman also of strong morals and strong fortitude and she marries someone who is really not anything like she believed she was marrying. And this is the story of her not um, becoming bitter, not becoming 
an angry young woman, but to overcome the situation with love and with grace, and it is fantastic. It's the Brothers Karamazov, and this is by uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky, and Brothers Karamazov is about a set of brothers. I love hearing Dostoevsky's heart as he tries to break down this relationship that we have with one another and the world and God and fellow man. It's just beautiful and it's scary and it's hard and there's so much drama, but I absolutely adore it for the conclusions that it comes to. But you have to like philosophy. <laughs> the Count of Monte Cristo, the boy who is talented and integrous and he gets taken advantage of and is sold into prison. Yet in that there is a relationship that is built that allows him to escape his prison and to find a way of bringing the other person to justice, the person that put him in prison, the people that put him in prison. And it's sad and it's difficult and it's beautifully written. Alexandre Dumas, I don't know if I said that, I loved it. Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Thurston. This deals with some really, really difficult subjects as well, but the way that she does it is so wonderful. So this is about a woman who basically is moving back to her hometown. She has suffered so much in her life. She is not willing to become bitter. She wants to live life with joy. And the way that she moves through life without fear. My favorite Steinbeck is East of Eden. Another one that is very difficult. It's like a, a retelling of so many of the events in the book of Genesis in the Bible. How many times have I said I love it? <laughs> Les Mis is another one that I adore. Again, another one that is so hard and yet so beautiful. And it is also taking place in France during the revolution. And it's, it's just, it's a masterpiece. It really is. It takes a lot to pick up a book that is that big. But if you do it, I promise you will not be disappointed is The Vicar of Wakefield by Oliver Goldsmith. And I just read this with Tiffany and Stephanie and oh my goodness, I just, I just love it. It is about a man with strength of character who loves and adores his family and refuses to let life and all of its wrongdoings and misconceptions and everything else, he refuses to let that uh, be the basis for his attitude toward life and toward people. And it's beautiful. There was one little thing at the very, very end that I was like, oh, Goldsmith, you should have done that differently. <laughs> Sophocles. These Theban plays are um, Oedipus Rex, Oedipus at Colonus, and Antigone. 
and Antigone in particular is the one that I love. And the reason for that is because her also strength of character, she's steadfast, she is faithful, she is not willing to let injustice stand. She's willing to go to great extremes in order for that to not happen. The importance of being earnest. <laughs> um, I think most people love the picture of Dorian Gray more than they love Oscar Wilde's play. Of the Oscar Wilde that I have read, my favorite of his. I have a nonfiction Oscar Wilde that I love, but this one, as far as fiction goes, this is the one that I really, truly adore. This isn't a very pretty copy. In fact, it's not pretty at all, but, <laughs> but I do love this play. This is Cyrano de Bergerac, and this is by Edmund Rostand, and this translation is by John Murrell. And this is about a man who finds himself so deformed and ugly that he thinks that he cannot be loved. And yet he has a quick wit and he has a loyal and deep and dear heart and the people that he loves he loves intensely so this story is about him loving someone that he doesn't think could ever love him back and so he helps someone else to love her well and for her to love him also and he does that at, you know, his expense. So it's just, it's funny, it's beautiful, and it is poignant. This is Abigail by Magda Zabo. So this is the story of wartime Hungary. And Gina in this story is our main protagonist and she is the daughter of a very loyal and um, very famous colonel in the Hungarian army. When he finds out what is happening in the war, he sends his daughter away to protect her. And he doesn't tell her that that's why he's sending her away. She kind of rebels at first against having to go to this very militant sort of girl's school. She thinks that her father is gonna come get her and she's gonna go back to her normal way of living. When her father finally reveals to her the reason that she is there, she does a, a 180. And then it is about being the best of the kind of person that her father would be honored to have saved. Some people would call this a nonfiction. However, it feels like it could be nonfiction, but it feels like there's a lot of fiction mixed in with it. There may not be, but nonetheless, My Family and Other Animals. This is by Gerald, Gerald Durrell. And this is one of the funniest books I have ever read in my whole life. I laughed continually. Um, I did have to get past the first uh, couple of chapters before the hilarity hit me. But it's about an English family who's very tired of the gray, dreary 
English weather, and they move to Corfu. This is Augustus. This is by John Williams. This feels like a classic. 1972. The story is revealed to us through diary entries, multiple people's diary entries. I love the way that we get this fully rounded picture of who he was because it's not just his diary, it's his daughter, it's his second wife, it is people in the army and his enemies and all of that kind of thing. And we're getting um, addresses to the Senate. We are getting uh, letters written back and forth between senators and others. And it's just, it was so, so well done. And I, I just really, really enjoyed it. Lorna Dune by Blackmore, R.D. Blackmore. And Lorna was such a surprise, completely engrossing once I got into it. It's just this sweeping, sweeping novel and covers, you know, a good amount of years. And it's a love story. It's just beautiful. The Road Past Altamont. This is by Gabrielle Roy. This is a series of four stories that are completely interconnected. The narrator of all four stories is looking back on her life and wanting to tell you about the women who were important to her. And so she picks up when she is a little girl going to stay with her grandmother for the first time. And then we get the story of her mother realizing that her grandmother is not able to really care for her land and her house and herself any longer and she needs to come and live with them. And then it is the story of her and her mother and what life looks like without the grandma there and what it looks like as she becomes older, old enough to start making her own decisions and, and what those decisions have as consequences. And then her as an adult kind of with the roles switched where she now is seeing that her mama is getting older and is not necessarily able to do all of the things that she would have done at one time and wanting to keep those memories with her mom. And this is Chasing Francis by Ian Morgan Cron about a pastor of a rather large church. His awakening to what it really means to be a Christian. He steps back because he feels like that's the best thing right then. And his uncle is a Franciscan monk. And he is about to go to Italy and do a pilgrimage uh, in the footsteps of St. Francis. And so the pastor goes along with his uncle to do this. And just the way that life changes and his mindset changes and his heart changes. And it was so impactful. And this is Elegance of the Hedgehog. And it's by Muriel Barbary. And this one is translated by Allison Anderson. This is the story of a, an older concierge. And it's the story of her relationship with one of the young tenants and how friendship finds us in the most unusual ways. And uh, just 
what the joy of relationship does for us in opening up our lives and opening up our hearts. A Gentleman in Moscow. This is now a well-known book. When I read this, it wasn't well-known at all. It was recommended to me by Brant Hansen from the Oddcast, if you know who that is. He said this was the best novel that he had read in a very long time. And I really trust Brant. Very slow, very gentle story. And again, about uh, what happens when you are just good to people, when you are kind, when you are patient, and the, the things that happen to you when you stay open and allow yourself to um, find those relationships that are going to come back to help and honor you as well. This is The Housekeeper and the Professor, and this is by Yoko Lagawa. The story of a professor who has had either, I think it's a brain injury, and it has caused him to not remember more than, I wanna say like 95 minutes or something like that at a time. He lives behind the home of his sister-in-law, who is now a widow. She wants to be responsible, but she doesn't want to be the one taking responsibility on a daily basis. And so she hires a housekeeper for him, explains the situation, and the housekeeper that she hires is a mama and as the professor and the housekeeper uh, build a sort of almost father-daughter relationship the housekeeper introduces her son to the professor it becomes almost like a little family and it's about the the growing up uh, with the professor and how the the lives affect one another. Just know that this is not an exhaustive list. <laughs> so let's draw for the novel. It'll be one of these little Macmillan pocket uh, classics that Jane Eyre is going to be that I send to someone. So I am going to start a screen record and we are going to spin a little wheel. So let's find out who the winner is. Are we ready? Okay, so Penny is the winner. I'm so excited that you won, Penny. <laughs> that is so fun. All right, so I just need your address, Penny. You know how to get a hold of me. <laughs> okay, thank you so much to everyone who wanted to participate in that. I'm blessed to be able to uh, celebrate the booktube second booktube birthday. My booktube birthday was actually exactly one month ago. It's on March 4th, but just life. I am so happy that all of you are here with me for it. So I will see you again very soon in another video. So like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to.